That means what happened to Kelly Burke could happen to me or any one of the other 136 million Americans who partake of America's most popular recreational drug, alcohol. What's worse, sobriety doesn't exempt anybody from this agony. Many of the victims on this program did not consume alcohol at all and are dead or paralyzed because someone else did. This program reminds us of how vulnerable we are. This is what happened to Maura Corrigan in one split second. Around the country, the phone is ringing and the emergency room is calling. Sometimes it's the morgue. The staggering number of Americans hit by life's biggest punch in the nose, the sudden death of a family member, is getting to us. We are finally realizing that Americans don't have a drinking problem. America has a drinking problem. Our nation can benefit from AA's counsel to its members. Although it's difficult, accept that you have a problem. There is ample evidence, however, that the United States of America in the matter of consumption of alcohol is still kidding itself. For example, we continue to use the phrase alcohol and drugs. Alcohol is a drug. We place a health warning on cigarettes, which will almost certainly kill the user, but place no such caution on a bottle of wine or a six-pack, which, if consumed, could kill the user and the Margaret Haley's and the Ted Crisps of America. We expose our children to television commercials which suggest that drinking is the American thing to do, a patriotic entitlement for a hard day's work. We make drinking under the age of 21 illegal, but feature beer commercials within the telecast of college sporting events. And have you ever noticed that the happy people in the beer and wine commercials never actually consume the product? That is television's self-imposed restriction. We sell it on television, we don't drink it on television. This hypocrisy gives us away. Our guilt about our drinking is showing. We claim to have one or two drinks to relax. Relax means a dulling of the senses and a slowing of the motor skills. Alcohol blunts awareness. If it didn't, you couldn't give it away. And one or two drinks may be all it takes to make you an impaired driver. There is some good news, however. Happy hours have been banned in 19 states. Breweries no longer sponsor chug-a-lug contests on college campuses. And alcohol rehab units in hospitals are running commercials that depict the agony of families with an alcoholic member. But we have only begun to meet our responsibility. Companies that make millions selling our most popular recreational drug ought to spend more of their profits reminding customers that their product can be abused. Commercials that urge caution should be as frequent and compelling as the ones that urge consumption. Stiffer laws have helped. If you're caught drunk while driving, this is what can now happen to you. In 21 states, your license can be pulled on the spot. In 12 states, you can't plea bargain your way out of a first offense. And in most states, repeat offenders will be sent to jail. And more and more states are joining this movement. We're finally getting tough on drunk drivers. While stiffer laws and stricter enforcement can help, the cops alone cannot solve this problem. We do not have the will to pay the taxes needed to build the jails and hire the police to catch the number of offenders who are coming toward us every day on every highway and at every intersection. Roadblocks, legal in 39 states, are not forever. Our salvation lies not in the police, but in ourselves. And that means coming out of the closet and admitting that most of us who drink occasionally drink too much. It means recognizing that many of us find it difficult to have a good time without alcohol. We do have a choice. We don't have to drink. We have the power to arrest this deadly trend. Our children are watching us and their lives may very well depend on how honest we are with ourselves and with them. The people in this documentary consented to share their pain with us because they believe it might save lives. They believe the memory of their loved ones is honored by their speaking through the tears and saying, don't let this happen to your family. Let's not waste their courage. I'm Phil Donahue.
Major funding for drinking and driving, the toll, the tears, has been provided by Mid-Atlantic Toyota Distributors Incorporated, a subsidiary of Frederick Wiseman Company. Additional funding has been provided by this and other public television stations. For a transcript of this program, send $4 to Drinking and Driving, PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. For information on video cassettes and discussion guides, please write WETA, Educational Activities, Post Office Box 2626, Washington, D.C., 20013.